Hey, what's up everybody? It's Nick Chino from VigilanteDetective.com and welcome to a new series here on the Rock Album Review Channel. It's called Ranked, where I pick a band and I take all their albums and I rank them from worst to best. And to kick off the first video for the Ranked uh, series here on Rock Album Review, I'm doing a ranking of the albums from the Smashing Pumpkins. Their new record, Shiny and Oh So Bright, comes out next week, next Friday, I believe, and it's the Reunited Pumpkins, you know, except for Darcy, of course. It's Billy Corgan, it's James E and Jimmy Chamberlain on record together for the first time since the year 2000. You know, we all know they got back together earlier this year. They've already been on the road. They've already released a couple of new songs from the record. So I thought, you know, what better time to, you know, rank all the Pumpkins albums than right now when they got a new record coming out and everybody's excited about a brand new reunited Pumpkins album. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rank all 11 Pumpkins albums. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of disclaimers before we get into the actual rankings. I did include the B-side album Pisces Iscariot. I know it's not a studio record. It's a record made up of B-sides from Gish and Siamese Dream. But, you know, for me as a listener and a Smashing Pumpkins fan uh, since the 90s, it was always kind of like a, an essential album in the Pumpkins discography. It kind of is the bridge album between Siamese Dream and Melancholy. So I did include uh, Pisces Iscariot on this list. I also included the Tear Garden by Kaleidoscope. Uh, project as well as Oceania and Monuments to an Elegy. I know those albums were part of the Tear Garden project, but they were released on their own, so I included them uh, in this rankings as well. So there are 11 albums total. I'm going to rank them from 11 to 1, but I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a disclaimer about why I included the albums that I did, and you know, kind of just so yeah, I don't get tons of comments saying, well, actually, this record is like this, and this record is like this. I know, but I wanted to include those albums because uh, they were essential to me. Also, before we get to the uh, the rankings of the Smashing Pumpkins albums, I have to give a couple of honorable mentions to some Billy Corgan Smashing Pumpkins projects released in the past that I am very, very fond of. The first of which is the Zwan album from 2003 called Mary Star of the Sea. Uh, probably one of my favorite things that Billy Corgan has ever done. And it's kind of a quasi Smashing Pumpkins record. Jimmy Chamberlain is on drums for that record. You know, there's a little bit of a different lineup. Of, uh, of the members in Zwan. They didn't last very long, but Mary Star of the Sea was a great record in 2003. Coming off, the, you know, the Smashing Pumpkins breakup and the kind of, you know, really dark, moody vibes of the Machina records, it was really nice to hear Billy Corrigan come back to kind of sunny rock songs, and it actually is one of my favorite kind of things that Billy Corgan has ever done. I know it's not a Smashing Pumpkins record, so I didn't include it on the list, but I wanted to give an honorable mention to Mary Star of the Sea by Zwan. Also, another honorable mention is uh, is this guy, the uh, Smashing Pumpkins EP, American Gothic, which came out, this came out in 2008 on the heels of the Zeitgeist record, and it's only four songs. It's kind of like a half acoustic, you know, kind of record that they released. It's, it's, it's awesome, and you know what? This is actually one of my favorite things that Billy Corgan and the Smashing Pumpkins have done over the last decade or so as well. There's a lot of really great songs on it. The Rose March, again, again, Pox and Sunkissed, very solid. So if you've never, uh, if you've never checked out uh, American Gothic, by Smashing Pumpkins or Zwan, Mary Star of the Sea. Those are my honorable mentions and I really do feel these are among kind of the best things that Billy Corgan has ever done. All right, coming in at number 11 is Monuments to an Elegy, the Smashing Pumpkins record that came out in 2014. It was the follow-up to 2012's Oceania, and uh, basically Billy Corgan fired the entire band that was on that record, except for Jeff Schroeder. He fired Nicole Fiorentino, he fired Mike Byrne, who I thought was a pretty good drummer for the Smashing Pumpkins, and he got Tommy Lee to do the, uh, the songs on this record, Monuments to an Elegy. I'm ranking this the lowest on the Smashing Pumpkins ranking list because... You know what, it, it's decent. It's got some decent songs on it, you know, like Tiberius and One and All, but overall I found the writing to be extremely weak on Monuments to an Elegy. It doesn't really feel like a full-fledged Smashing Pumpkins record because, uh, you know, Billy's not really doing a band thing on this record, it's just him and, uh, and and Tommy Lee, and it was just kind of a disappointing follow-up to Oceania, which is a record that I really loved. You'll find that that'll be a lot higher on this list. Uh, but yeah, it's just not a really great record for me. It was kind of a letdown overall, some solid songs, but Definitely the worst of these Smashing Pumpkins albums. And at number 11 is Monuments to an Elegy. 
In at number 10, we have the 2007 album Zeitgeist. Okay, this album was the reunion of the, the Smashing Pumpkins the, the first time, I guess. It was just Billy and Jimmy who got together for this record in 2007 called Zeitgeist. I really do like the album cover on, on this. And this was uh, you know the reunion after the band broke up during the Machina days. And uh, Billy Corgan said that he wanted his band back. He wanted to make music under the Smashing Pumpkins moniker. But as far as the songs go and the production goes, this is kind of one of the weaker you know Smashing Pumpkins records, especially in terms of the production. It doesn't sound very good. When it came out in 2007, I was very into it because I think I was um, kind of under the spell of having a new Smashing Pumpkins record. I was just excited to have uh, the band back. But as the years have progressed, it's been a good decade since this came out. As the years have progressed, it hasn't really aged as well as some of the other uh, Smashing Pumpkins records. And, you know, it, it is a, a decent listen, uh, you know, from time to time, but it's not something that I go back to very often. So in at number 10, we have Zeitgeist. In at number nine, we have Machina 2, The Friends and Enemies of Modern Music, okay? Guys, I'm gonna show you something. This is my copy of Machina 2, The Friends and Enemies of Modern Music. I had a friend of mine in high school, because uh, I didn't have a CD burner at the time. This is how old I am, and this is how old this uh, copy is. This is back in 2000, 2001, and my friend burned me this copy. Uh, it's not even a real copy, because the album was only released online. Billy Corgan released it for free, and had uh, you know fans kind of um, just... Uh, just to burn their own copies for themselves. So yeah, this is my my vintage self-burned copy of uh, of Machina 2. And I think that one of the reasons that I'm not ranking it that high on this uh, on this list, even though the songs are really good, is because I've never really gotten to hear it in a in a really solid you know version. I've never gotten to hear it in high quality version. I would love to hear a song like Dross in you know full studio studio quality. I'm not sure if they've really released any better versions of this over the years, but I'd love to hear songs like Dross and Glasses Theme and Innocence and Let Me Give the World to You in in solid you know studio quality recordings. I do think, and I, I think Billy Corgan has mentioned that both Machina and Machina Two are going to be re-released uh, very soon in deluxe editions. So very much looking forward to having this in a good quality version on my CD shelf to replace this uh, this old, you know, 18-year-old uh, uh, burned version. Uh, but as far as it goes right now, it's not super high up on the list. So in at number nine is, uh, is Machina, the friends and enemies of modern music. In at number eight, we have Tear Garden by Kaleidoscope. Now, a couple of years ago, uh, Billy Corgan said that he was going to record a 44-song album that he was going to release in uh, in various EPs over the years until he got to this entire project, 44 songs, and uh, he, he got pretty far before he abandoned uh, the project. Like I said, Oceania and Tear Garden by our Oceania and Monuments to an Elegy are actually part of this overall project, but they were released as separate albums. But he did release three EPs worth of material before Billy Corgan gave up on the Tear Garden by Kaleidoscope. Is, is that how you say it? The Tear Garden by Kaleidoscope uh, project. But it did actually feature a lot of great songs that I think are some of the best that the Pumpkins have done over the last decade or so. Songs like Tom Tom and uh, Widow Wake My Mind. I think that's the right title. As well as, you know, Song for His Son. Um, what's a, what's a color? A Freak. That's another good one. Uh, there are some really great songs, but the thing that bugs me most about this project is that Billy Corgan never finished it. He got, he got pretty Far. I think he released like 30 something songs out of the 44 planned tracks, but it just kind of bugs me that he never finished the project. I hate it when artists kind of set out these big, uh, these big projects for themselves. Like, I'm going to record a 44 song album, and then they give up halfway through. So, in at number eight is Tear Garden by Kaleidoscope. In at number seven, we have Machina, The Machines of God. Now this was a big record for the Pumpkins back in the year 2000 because Jimmy Chamberlain had rejoined the band and they had, you know, were releasing new music. They had gone back on tour. The original four members were back together, but it didn't last long because it was the beginning of the end for the Smashing Pumpkins. And uh, when this came out in the year 2000, I was actually really, really into it. Um, I enjoyed a lot of the songs like Everlasting Gaze. You know, after Adore, everybody was looking forward to the Pumpkins having their kind of rock edge back, and they definitely did that on this record with Everlasting Gaze and, you know, Stand Inside Your Love and uh, the Sacred and Profane Heavy Metal Machine. I actually do really enjoy this record, obviously more than the, the second Machina record. Uh, it's just like, you know, it's not something that I go back to a lot. It's a little bit of a doom and gloom kind of record. It is one of those kind of darker, kind of metal-tinged uh, Pumpkins records, but so I don't really go to it all that often, but I, but I do enjoy it and I'm kind of looking forward to... Um, 
listening to it again. I've been going back through the whole Pumpkins discography in, a, in, you know, in anticipation of the new record, so I'm very much looking forward to uh, listening to this record. In at number seven, Machina, The Machines of God. In at number six, we have Adore, which was a very controversial Pumpkins record back in 1998. Uh, Jimmy Chamberlain had been fired from the band after his drug abuse problems, so uh, Billy, James, and Darcy kind of pressed ahead with a record that was definitely the opposite of Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. Adore is a great album that I loved when it came out back in, you know, 20 years ago, back in 1998. It was kind of the record that helped me get into the Smashing Pumpkins a little bit more than I had been uh, in the past. It's just like, it's it's a little bit controversial because, you know, it's not a rock album. There are a lot of, you know, kind of more electronic, kind of piano-driven songs on this record, and I think a lot of Pumpkins fans have come around to it over the, the course of uh, the last 20 years just because, you know, Billy Corgan hasn't been making music with the original lineup, and I think a lot of people kind of hold that original lineup to, up to a, a certain uh, high regard, so I think that's why it's aged well for a lot of fans over the years. And it's something that, it's just a record that I really love. I'm really, really fond of this record, and I really do enjoy it. So in at number six, we have a door. In at number five, we have Oceania from 2012. Okay, so here's the thing. When I, when I talk to people who say, you know what, Smashing Pumpkins suck, man. There's no records that they've released in the last 20 years that are as good as Siamese Dream and Melancholy and, and, uh, and you know, Pisces Iscariot and Gish. And to that I say, that is just an outright lie. Because in 2012, the Smashing Pumpkins, Billy Corgan, along with Mike Byrne, Jeff Schroeder, Nicole Florentino, the best lineup of the band since the original lineup, they released this record and it was an out-and-out instant classic for me as a Pumpkins fan. If you are one of those fans who only likes the Smashing Pumpkins when they're doing that kind of vintage classic Smashing Pumpkin sound that they do on Siamese Dream and Melancholy, then this is as close as you're gonna get. This record is awesome, and I'm, I'm kind of nervous that the new one isn't gonna live up to this because I really do love Oceania, okay? This, ha this album has songs like Quasar, Panopticon, The Celestials, My Love is Winter, Oceania, the, the title track, The Chimera, which might be one of those Smashing Pumpkins best rock songs in over a decade. Uh, Glissandra. This record is dripping, dripping with awesome songs. So I urge you, if you're one of those people who hasn't really listened to the Pumpkins in a long time and think that they haven't done anything worthwhile, I say listen to Oceania because this album is awesome and it comes in at number five. Coming in at number four, we have the debut album from the Pumpkins. It's called Gish. Now, I do enjoy Gish, but it's as far as Pumpkins records goes, it's never really you know stood out to me. A lot of the songs on this record, they just don't stick in my head the way that some of the songs from you know Siamese Dream and Melancholy do. You know, you have songs like Rhinoceros and I Am One and Siva and Tristessa, which are absolute classics. But you know, the album just never has really stood out to me as as much as I I, I hoped it would. Uh, obviously, it's a classic and it's a great record, but it's you know I feel like the Smashing Pumpkins weren't quite fully formed. Billy Corgan still finding his voice. They hadn't quite you know found all the hooks that they would on their later material. But it is kind of a nice snapshot of the band as they were, you know, emerging as a, as a popular band at the beginning of the uh, of the 90s. So, in at number 4, we're going to put Gish. In at number 3 is Pisces Iscariot. Like I said, I know that this is the B-side record that the band put out in 1994 that featured B-sides and unreleased tracks from the Gish and Siamese Dream eras. But, uh, you know, I wasn't really listening to the Pumpkins when they first released this record, so I kind of got into it in the later 90s, and it always kind of served as an essential kind of bridge between Siamese Dream and Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. And it features some of my favorite Pumpkin songs, songs that I like even more than the songs on Gish, even if some of those are from that era. So, you know, songs like Frail and Bedazzled and Whirr and Pissant and uh, Hello Kitty Cat, the, you know, their cover of Landslide. This album is is a classic. Like I said, I know it's not a full-fledged studio album. It's a, it's a compilation album. It's a B-side album, but it really is, to me, an essential part of the Pumpkins discography. So, in at number three, I'm going to put Pisces Iscariot. All right, so let's get to number two on the list, and this is kind of the point in the uh, in the in the rankings that uh, I think people are going to have the biggest disagreement about what number one and number two is. Now, we always knew what number one and number two were going to be. Okay, it's going to be Siamese Dream and Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. Okay, those first few Pumpkins records are always going to be the best records in the minds of their fans and even though know, casual fans or diehard fans those are the go-to classic records okay so I know it's gonna be melancholy and Siamese dream okay in number one and number two but which ones are they gonna be in well 
Here we go, number two, it's Siamese Dream, okay? So I know a lot of people would put this as, as number one, okay? Because this is probably the best Smashing Pumpkins album. But as a listener, as a, as a diehard fan myself, um, I, I gotta go with it in number two, okay? We'll get to Melancholy in, in a minute. You know, it's obviously that, you know, double album opus. But Siamese Dream is the Smashing Pumpkins coming into their own. It's the, the you know, the kind of the, the default blueprint Smashing Pumpkin sound. When people think of the Pumpkins, this is the record that they think about. They think of songs about, you know, Chair Rock and Today and Disarm and Rocket and Mayonnaise and Soma and Geek USA. This album is, is classic through and through. Every song is solid. It's a 90s classic, it's an all-time rock classic, and it's an all-time Pumpkins classic. You can't get any better than Siamese Dream, although I guess you can if Melancholy is number one. But man, I, I just love this record so much. I listened to it the other day for the first time in a little while, and it's just, it's so good. But had to put it in at number two, Siamese Dream. And in at number one at our rankings list of the Smashing Pumpkins albums, we have Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness, okay? Like I said, Siamese Dream is kind of like the blueprint, kind of the default sound for the Smashing Pumpkins, but they ran the gamut on this album. This is my original album from the 90s. It's like in some giant, if you're younger than, than me, you know, if you weren't kind of listening to music in the 90s, this thing is huge. Look at this. It's like a digipack. It's like the CDs are always falling out of the tray. Anyways, the album itself is awesome. Like I said, the Pumpkins really ran the gamut on this album. They do every style imaginable. In addition to the 28 songs on this record, they released probably uh, the same amount in B-sides from the record, you know, the songs that they released on the Melancholy Deluxe Edition, the prolificy, <laughs> was that even a word? The band was very prolific during this period. The amount of songs that they were putting out at this time was just absolutely insane. And, you know, this album does obviously feature some all-time Pumpkins classics like 1979 and Bullet with Butterfly Wings and Tonight Tonight. But it also features some kind of lesser-known tracks that just really add to the Pumpkins mythos. Uh, you know, like Bodies, Where Boys Fear to Tread, Muzzle is one of my favorites, Jelly Belly, uh, We Only Come Out at Night, XYU. The list goes on and on. This album really is kind of like, you know, the pumpkins in a nutshell, you know, if you want to get every aspect of their songs, uh, every aspect of their sound from the heavy songs to the acoustic songs to the kind of dreamy uh, songs that they do so well, it really is all on melancholy and the infinite sadness. So that is why I ranked it number one on our list of Smashing Pumpkins ranked albums. All right, guys, that is it for my list. That is my rankings of the Smashing Pumpkins albums. Let me know what your rankings are of the albums in the comments below. Make sure to like this video. Make sure to share this video with your fellow rock fans, your fellow Pumpkins fans. Make sure to subscribe right here to Rock Album Review on YouTube. And uh, yeah, we got a new Smashing Pumpkins record coming out next Friday, Shiny and Oh So Bright, Volume 1. Very much looking forward to uh, hearing what the Reunited Pumpkins have for us uh, on this new record. So we'll do a, a record review of that coming up next week. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot for watching my rankings video. We'll see you guys in the next uh, ranked video here on Rock Album Review.